Animals are messy and they leave behind traces of their cellular material in any environment that they're in. We can think of water as the soup of genetic material that's shed from different individual animals, from bacteria and viruses all the way up to larger organisms like fish and whales. Similar to how people leave behind fingerprints when they touch a table surface. Salmon and steelhead are important for these coastal ecosystems because they provide ocean-rich nutrients back into the ecosystems that they use for spawning. Using traditional eDNA monitoring methods, we would have to go out to the field site and manually collect those samples. The Environmental Sample Processor, or ESP, is affectionately called a laboratory in a can. But really what it is is this complex robotic instrument that was developed to capture eDNA by filtering water. The automated nature of the ESP allows us to take a lot of samples and those provide a good snapshot of the ecosystem at a lot of different time points. Over the course of a year, we use three different ESPs, which we call Mo, Gordon, and Waldo, to monitor salmonid species in Scott Creek. a fish trap weir system in place where they trap migrating salmon and steelhead that move up and down Scott Creek. And that allowed us to also get visual observations of fish alongside of the eDNA measurements. these 55 gallon drum looking instruments on a narrow path to our field site. The ESPs run completely autonomously. We just hook them up to the sampling water system. Then we use a cellular network to send code to the instrument to program it to collect samples at a given frequency. Once the samples are returned to the lab, we take those filters, apply some chemistry to it, and we break open any cells or free DNA that are on the filters. And then we use that DNA and some molecular tools to match those sequences to a reference library, or we pick out specific DNA sequences that we're interested in. So we collected 750 samples over the course of a year. That's a lot of samples. And processing those samples in the lab is another bottleneck. If we could use eDNA and monitor these systems in real time, it would allow us to make better, more informed decisions about conservation of these species.